Mazel morons. Baruch Hashem. We have a oh. Jewish priestess here, a queen, our boss. Priestess? Claudia Ashri. A priestess. Is that, Is that the wrong word? I prefer, like, you could say Jewess. You could say Jewish goddess. It's just some ideas. Throwing it out there. You do you. A priestess is someone who is is spreading the gospel. Yeah, a priestess is Christian. I think so. You can't really have a a Jewish priest would be a rabbi, so a priestess would be a female rabbi, which we don't really recognize, anyways. Ben Rebitson, Rebitson, Rebitson. That's the wife of a rabbi. So I'm the rabbi. Very good. It's all come full circle. Claude, you look absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Your makeup is glowing. Thank you. Please don't hate me. No. <laughs> Please don't hate me. Please. Me Please. and Ben are in a fight. We're in a fight. Ben, Look, okay, this is the thing more. is like, I, I pride myself on being like a really um, professional, timely. I don't cancel. Like I am really like, I like to be professional. That's how I think is one of my greatest attributes, my work ethic. I agree. And Ben, like, very, you know, randomly a couple days ago was like, well, you do good guys on Thursday. And, of course, like, I always say yes. You know, the good guys. I have love in my heart for the good guys. Now, Ben, like, never reminded me, never anything. I left the house today. Ben didn't say anything. The gaslighting. I finally get to my destination, which I had a whole afternoon planned to go see my friend. We were going to have pickleball, play lunch. Ben's like, are you coming back for good guys? I'm like, you literally did not remind me. He's like, I sent you a calendar invite. Who gets a calendar? Everyone, everyone sends a calendar invite. Josh. This is actually what happened two days ago. You ready for this? I sent her a calendar invite for two o'clock. You know what she did as a joke? Oh. You know what she did? Tell declined. Me, declined. It. declined. Declined. So Good obviously joke, it wasn't Claudia. on her calendar. I sent it to you. You declined it. I have the read receipts for it. Okay. I'm and so I'm sorry that, that I was reminded of it because it was on my calendar. So it was on my calendar. I declined it as a joke and then I accepted it. So it was on my calendar. I don't like make appointments on Google Calendar, especially with people I'm living in the same house with and sleeping in the same bed in. And I turn around. I cut my afternoon short. You can apologize to Abe. I'm here and I don't like to be late. And I apologize for my tardiness. You are responsible for getting me here and you failed. So yes, I'm mad at you. And that's why I'm only looking at Josh. Okay. But like it's done. It's over. Yeah, me and Josh are good. Me it's and Josh over. are good. But me well, and Josh I, are good. Listen, We're in a love triangle. I will say <laughs> that my wife and I, my wife has explained to me that it is important that we go over schedules. Granted, we have little humans and whatnot, so things get busy. Because I like to save to tell her things to the last minute when I'm not going to be home because I'm afraid of her, right? Let me ask you a question. <laughs> I woke up with Ben. <laughs> yes. I got dressed with Ben. Mm -hmm. Ben was in the driveway as I was getting in the car to go spend the afternoon with my friend Jason. And at any of those moments, did you bring up the recording? We haven't discussed the recording since the day we decided to record. No reminder, no nothing. If this podcast was so important to you, maybe you would have remembered. So I need you to admit before I can move past this, I need you to wow. admit that you also wow. forgot. I will admit that the reason I use calendars is because I uh, would like to- That's not what I asked. That's not what I asked. I also forgot. Thank you. You also forgot, therefore, ruining my afternoon, cutting my time short with Jason, who, you know, was very upset. I'm overjoyed to be here. And let's leave it at that. Please be honest. I love seeing you two in Florida in the Boca lifestyle because I feel like it's a snapshot of where you guys will be in five years full time. You know what? I think a lot of people think that like every time we come down here, it like spurs the conspiracy theory that we're going to end up moving down to Florida and we enjoy our time here immensely. I mean, we've, you know, extended our trip twice. We don't really have a flight home and I love it here and no shade to anybody who lives here. It's just, I feel like every time we come down here, it's a bigger reinforcement that this lifestyle is really just not for us. Like we don't come down here and like look at houses and be like, what if we, there's really, um, it's so nice to have, but it's really not, I don't think, in the cards for us. It's not in the cards. It's not in the cards for us. Certainly not. It, it, the longer that you stay, the longer you just crave the action of the city. And it's a really, yeah. really amazing reprieve. We are so fortunate that we have so many loved ones that have welcomed us into yes, their homes for yes. extended periods of time so that we don't have to foot large hotel bills. That said, going home, home is where the heart is. And me doing an in and out, we spoke about it on a past episode, doing an in and out to New York yesterday, going in there, breathing in that crisp Northeast oh, air. Were you craving it? Oh my God. I got like euphoric, just like smelling LaGuardia. Did you not want to come home? And then I needed to leave. 
No, I. You should have stayed. No, I couldn't. I couldn't leave you. Oh, I really? You. I think you could have. I missed you terribly. I think you'd be I fine. Couldn't leave You're you. leaving Give me your hand. You're always leaving me. Yeah, I'm leaving you. You left me for Jason. Yeah, I did. Josh, uh, would you ever move to Florida? Never. Why? I live in California. So? Because Florida is where people you have fa- go You have family in Florida? To- Florida is where people go when they can't go to California. I don't know about that. It's- no, I, I feel like you just made that up. I think you made that up. Uh, let me tell you guys a couple of things. <laughs> it's <laughs> California is arguably top 10 most stunning places on earth. Florida. I feel like you also just made that up. He often does. Uh, that's not true. That's uh, that is true. Na- okay. Napa, Sonoma, Big Sur. You said Sur. most stunning place on earth. You did say earth, yeah. not the United States. Oh, uh, allow me to say it again. On or big, I maybe you guys have never been. Big Sur is inarguably. Name me more beautiful places. Oh, the Turks and Caicos. Um, That's a beach. That's a beach. That's a beautiful place. Is a mean, beach not a beautiful place? You didn't say the most beautiful place that isn't a beach. This is true. I'm talking, also, what about the stands? Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Turkmenistan, Turkistan. Uh, um, Turks, Bahamas, uh, Hawaii. Uh, there's beautiful places everywhere. Fiji. Fiji. They're they're pretty, but what I'm saying is is that inarguably, like the hill. Um, I'm talking about yes, obviously the Maldives, every island. Yes, French Polynesia, Tahiti, but they're they're similar, right? It's like be. I'm talking about singular places. I'm not talking about you could trade out Aruba for Turks and Caicos. For Bahamas, not Atlantis, not Atlantis. I don't want to talk about Hillary Duff, but, (laughs) but um, (laughs) I'm talking about singular places. I'm talking about the hills of Tuscany. I'm talking about like one in a million places and Big Sur, Sonoma, the Napa Valley are in probably the top 20 most beautiful places on earth easily. And I think that people who that's, that's your truth. And we love that for you. <laughs> okay. And, and the mass, the, the mass uh, understanding of truth. But it's also like in California, you have San Francisco, you have Los Angeles, you have two of the most major cities in the country. You have, you have know, Miami and Florida. Way, by the way, I want to say, if you're going to make a case for California, there's definitely a case to be made. I agree with you, like Montecito, Big Sur. But if I were you, I would remove San Francisco from like your list of attributes. It's really not like the greatest place. It's one of the greatest places on earth. It's having a rough moment. (laughs) That's a good way to put it. I like that. (laughs) It's certainly having a rough moment, but oh yeah, easily. Um, And I think Florida, Florida makes a lot of sense for the tax incentive. Uh, many things in Florida. So then why is there 50% taxes in New York? Because New York has one of the greatest cities on earth. Yeah, but I guess we're, we're talking about natural attributes, right? New York doesn't have. Can I ask I'm, you guys a question? Yeah, please. Is anybody else having deja vu? I feel like we've had, the three of us have had this conversation before, either on a podcast or like out to dinner. I don't know. But yes, it, it's certainly on track for us. Totally. Like fighting about where we live. No, but it's not even where we live. We're fighting about, we, I, I, just, I just asked Josh a simple question. Would you ever live in Florida? Josh, do you identify as a New Yorker? Like at all? You are from here. I mean, certainly, not here, but you know, it's in my bones. It's in my blood. I mean, yeah. my mom's name is Barbara. Enough said. I mean, enough said. I, I come from a long line of, of Jew Northeasterners. I feel a love mm-hmm. and a connection for New York. But I think the and I'm not I'm 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 not including Miami because Miami is a spectacular city and and just the cultural epicenter of like Latin Latin American influence. It's a fabulous place. But I think the big draw for Florida is to your point, like the South Florida, West Palm, Boca, Fort Lauderdale, Tampa. Like the, I'm talking about the city centers. These are lovely. It's it's like Scottsdale, Arizona. Like it's strip malls. Oh, I'm so and glad you brought that up. And lovely I houses, loved Scottsdale, Arizona. I bet you I did. Loved. You love a container store, don't you, Claudia? <laughs> I, I love a strip mall. Right. I loved the weather. I loved the people, and I loved the culture. The culture is very—it's a kind of like a drinking city. It gives off like it's like a mini Vegas, that old Scottsdale 
part of town. Obviously, it's a big golf area, which I think Ben would love about it. But I would totally, I would never live in Scottsdale. I would love to have a second or third, maybe fourth home there. Would you say that people in California treat Arizona the way that New Yorkers treat Florida? No, because there's no need to have an escape. Right. I think people move to, uh, Californians who want to save money move to Hendersonville, Nevada. Like they just mm. move to Nevada. <sighs> Another thing I've noticed, Josh, you pronounce it Florida? Florida, yes. And you're from New York. Because I've I've had to adopt a non-regional accent to to have what is a middling career in show business. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> yeah, that's really why I never pursued acting. Um, I think my voice is far too annoying. Well, I disagree. You, you, you have a great voice. She does. I have a very distinct accent, no? I wouldn't say accent. You have a ism, like a New York ism about you, but I don't think you have like a Long Island, Staten Island thing. No, I think we're all beating around the bush. I have like vocal fry. That's what people tell me. I don't think you do. I think Not that bad. those people aren't your friends. Well, I've gotten a lot better. If you go back and listen to episodes of The Toast from like 2018, 19, oh my God, you never heard two more annoying voices in your life. Like, really nasally we used to say like every other word i still use it like i'm not amazing with you know the use of the word like but it used to be so much worse we were so annoying like i can't believe anybody ever listened to our podcast josh did we talk about uh when in utah we watched claudia's bat mitzvah video exactly did we talk no. about this at all please okay share. so we watched we watched her gorgeous bat mitzvah video she was st- Cute as a button, what are you 12 years say? old, amazing, amazing party. So many friends, so much grinding, dancing. <laughs> These speeches, you know how they do like bat, bat mitzvah speeches? She's like thanking candles, people. Oh candles. my God, her voice, you have no idea. Like the thickest Long Island accent you've ever heard in your life. It's really crazy. And I've really naturally shed it. Like as of a few years ago, I still had somewhat of a really, really annoying Long Island accent. And- my bat mitzvah is like really probably the worst of it. I'm truly talking like this. I can't believe it's my bat mitzvah. I love you all. You look gorgeous, like really gorgeous. Like so thick. Insane. That's so, oh, I love, I mean, I do love the accent. Like, do you say, um, say hilarious. How would you say that? Josh, you are so hilarious. Okay. So you don't want to say hilarious. Oh my God, you know what? That is how people pronounce it in Long Island. And no, I've never once felt compelled or pulled to say hilarious. Oh, that's terrible. That's now, terrible. What would you call the thing that you put your socks and underwear in? Oh, we just had this conversation on the toast. More so about how that word, D-R-A-W-E-R, is such a bad word for like a multitude of reasons. The spelling, the pronunciation, the applications. But I'm going to put my underwear in the Drawer. Drawer. Drawer, right. So that's great because I I moved to California at fourteen. I remember my manager at the time being like, "You're never gonna say draw again," <laughs> and I because uh, I said draw, draw. Oh, that was thick. But Did I'll you hear that. I'll go out of my way not to use that word. It's such an uncomfortable word. I'll say the cabinet. Like I'll find a different word because I don't like that word. Drawer is no good. Drawer is no good. Josh, should we do a speak pipe? Today's episode of Good Guys is brought to you by Quince. Quince is a wardrobe upgrade of quality essentials at an unbeatable price. Quince has you covered with timeless pieces that never go out of style. And I love that they have like sweaters from 50 bucks that are cashmere crew necks. And they have 100% leather jackets, versatile flow net activewear. But the truth is, is that you don't want to have those pieces in your closet that you look at after six months and go, what was I thinking? <laughs> but with Quince, you're going to have these things that are timeless. I love having uh, the cashmere sweater that I have from Quince literally works nine months out of the year, except for like the absurdly hot months. And it can dress, you can dress it up and can be more formal. It can be like just slouchy and easy. Something you throw on if you're just hanging around the house Look, the best part about Quince is that all their items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands, and they cut the cost to the middleman and pass the savings to you. Also, what you'll love about Quince is that they only work with factories that use safe, ethical, responsible manufacturing practices with premium fabrics and finishes. I, I love that. And yeah, you're going to have these essential timeless pieces that you can dress up, dress down with, or just wear, just wear the sweater and no pants. That's what I do. 
So indulge in affordable luxury. Go to quince.com slash good guys for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash good guys to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash good guys. This podcast is sponsored by Squarespace. Look, Squarespace is the way that you're going to have a website for your business. If you don't have a website, you're... What are you nuts? That's a true what are you nuts? You need it no matter what. Randomly, I was going to go to this little hole in the wall restaurant and I wanted to like quickly check out what they had and they didn't have a website. And I was like, listen, I know you're a whole hole in the wall website. You don't have to have one, but it would be nice. Look, with Squarespace, it's going to make your life easier. You don't have to be a programmer. You don't have to like know how to write code. You just have to basically have a Squarespace account and it's going to make your life easy when you're creating a website, whether you want to do custom merch, an online store, whether you have like a video collection or, or you need assets like from an asset library for your, your website. Squarespace is going to help with all that. Plus they have incredible analytics so you can use insights to grow your business. And if you're into blogging, they have a powerful blogging tool to share stories, photos, videos, and updates. And what's great as well is it has flexible payments so you can make checkout seamless for your customers with simple but powerful payment tools. You can accept credit cards, PayPal, Apple Pay. And I just think if you want to be able to connect directly with your audience, be able to sell them something and to not have to worry about any of the back end stuff, then Squarespace is for you. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash good guys to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Do it. Here's from <laughs> Anonymous. Oh. <sighs> Josh and Ben, um, I have a question for you that I need a male's point of view on. Um, so I am getting married in the beginning of April, and I have already bought my soon-to-be husband his wedding present. And I bought him some custom-made Nike Air Force Ones for us to wear for the reception. And my question for you guys is, is when I asked him, well, what are you going to get me for the wedding day present? He, his response was, oh, what are you talking about? That is fake. We don't actually need to buy each other wedding presents on the wedding day. That's something that capitalism and Instagram makes you think that you need. So my question for you awesome. is, did you guys buy your wives gifts for the wedding day? Um, and just a little background about him. He's very, he's a CPA, he's in finance, tight to chess. He's like, we've already spent all this money on, you know, wedding bands, the honeymoon, blah, blah, blah. And he's not a very sentimental person. So what are your thoughts? Did you guys buy your wives gifts for the wedding day? Let me know. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I bought a ring. I bought a band. Like a wedding band and like, not just like the regular gold band, like a big diamond band. Well, you got the band. We got the band like years later. Was that true? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. I got the ring. No, but well, you got the ring like a year before the wedding. Okay. <laughs> I showed up. <laughs> like, like, I don't know. I, I, I guess like I've never, I've never heard of that. I didn't know that you get your wife a wedding present on her wedding day outside of. Well, you got a present on your wedding day. What did I get? A watch. Oh, oh damn. So you, were you so were you snubbed? No, I, I wasn't expecting. I, I like the watch was really like for you because I got a ring, yes, a year before, but like I had this ring and the watch was for you. I don't think uh and I also feel like it's very cultural, the the swapping of mm. gifts. Some people, like some religions and some like cultures have specific traditions. So I feel like people have their own rules. There's no set rule. Like with a bridesmaid, yeah, you get your bridesmaid uh a gift. That's a nice thing to do. Like there isn't a rule about wedding gifts, but she already got him the the sneakers. I feel like the problem here isn't the exchange of gifts. It's like, he kind of sounds rude. He does. He sounds wow. miserable, but I didn't want to comment on that far. I didn't want to comment on no, that. No, like you should get married, but like, I don't know if it was the way like she was telling the speak pipe or how it's actually happening, but like he sounded rude. Like you got him a present and the idea of him getting you a present, like his response sounded like really rude. Yeah, it bothered him. Yeah. It bothered him. And like, she was like calling him cheap and no, like, like, and, and, like and, miserable. And he, and he works in finance. So like obviously yeah. he has like a good, you know, salary. Weddings are expensive. So people tighten the purse strings. I get it. I just didn't like the way he responded. And that just might be you misrepresenting what happened or the actual truth. But also what kind of gift is she looking to receive? Because if she's giving out custom Air Force Ones, not that that's not a wonderful gift. 
It it's is. very, very sentimental. If she's looking for a sentimental gift in return, right, that doesn't have a very high price tag, then she, then him being a CPA and being tight to the chest and being cheap has nothing to do with it. I just right? feel like planning a wedding is so hard and so expensive and everybody's fighting and the families, like really, you're going to pick a fight about this? It's so irrelevant. Just let it go. Let I it agree. go. I agree. I agree. Josh? I love your take. And I was going to say the same thing, Ben, which is why I love being your co-host. I think, listen, Nike ID, I realize, you know, you customize, <laughs> you paid full freight. These are not, you know, discount <laughs> shoe warehouse, Air Force Ones, Air Force, you know, one and a halves. <laughs> Nevertheless, okay, this is a hundred fifty dollar, two hundred dollar gift. So I think that if if you're working within that price range, then it's it's incumbent on him to be like, listen, if it's gonna mean something to her and it's two fifty or less, grant. If she was like, I want a Rolex or something like that, he'd be like, babe, we're we're shelling out a hundred grand for the wedding. Can we chill out on doing something yeah. extravagant? But two fifty or less, and it's gonna mean something to her. It's a it's a beyond a no brainer. Yeah, he should get it. And she got the custom Air Force One. She should go and get the the Donnies, the $400 Donald Trump. Those beautiful yeah. shoes. Do you see those? Mm -hmm. No, what is that? <laughs> you didn't see those? No, what is it? Oh, my God. Donald Claudia. Trump. Yeah. I, are you serious? Oh, my God. Calm down. I didn't no, see you, it. No, you, I've never, ever been with you in my life where you haven't seen something. It's actually so true. I'm always Don like explaining Donald what's Trump, going on. Donald Trump made $400 like Air Force Ones that he sold online and sold out of them to his community. Are they like Nikes? No. I'll show you them. I can't. You haven't They're seen sketchers. these? They're sketchers. Oh my sketchers. God, get over it. You know something that I don't know. Like, <laughs> oh my God. It's not going to happen again. Calm down. I can't believe that I know this and you don't know this. I can just oh imagine God. him being the like, Claudia Ashri doesn't know my sneaker <laughs> drop. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't, Awful. You didn't see these? No, I've never seen. They're all seen gold. They're 400 bucks. But by the way, a sold out shoe, I mean, get he might have made 10. Out. Let's not believe that. Well, like, okay, he made that was actually a big conversation. Did you see the drama on TikTok, Josh, about Emily Mariko's like tote bags? Oh, uh, did we talk about this with Hannah Burner? So, like Emily Mariko, the TikTok girly, like came out with her first product ever, and it was these farmers market bags that were like so expensive, and they really cost like a dollar. But I think she sold them for like almost two hundred dollars, and people were all mad and whatever. But they ended up selling out. But then it's like the conversation: like you could make anything sell out. Like you don't actually have to have sold every single, you know, a thousand bags. People are like, well, did she just market as sold out for like marketing? You know, yeah, I feel like totally. That too. So. Did she sell it out? I guess the world will never know. Yeah, it could be a limited drop. Listen, we have, oh, Marshall showing it to me now. It's a cute, it, it seems very farmer, farmer market-esque. It's 120. I think those probably cost, what, 20? I don't. I mean, I'd have to feel the the durability. Wait, we, right, we have right. A, we have were a marketing. To, you know, similar brands selling similar bags for literally $30. We have a marketing genius here in, in our Ben Soffer. What's like the exactly. normal markup? Two and a half percent? It, for like someone like Emily cost? Rico, who's never launched a product. And like, this is her first, first big thing. And she's known for cooking and she always gets fresh fruit from the farmer's market. Like it was very, she had never launched anything. I actually thought it was like a good idea that she launched her own thing. She doesn't really do brand partnerships. She was just kind of like making her content. Even when she blew up, like she never went on TV and did a podcast or whatever. So this was her first big thing. And people were like, they were, they were rioting in the streets. So what was the, what's the product? It's a big tote bag. Okay. Not really like different or unique in any way. Okay. And it was like, according to people, obscenely overpriced. How much was it? $120. $120 for a tote. For a tote. Got it, That's yeah. made of like canvas. Yeah, so she probably got that bag for $10. Mm -hmm. So 130 is quite obscene, yes. Yeah. That said, sometimes you're pricing things to be premium, right? Like, right. Like Louis Vuitton sneakers, Gucci sneakers, these do not cost anywhere near $650 to, to make, right? And they sell them for that. Trying to make a premium brand. She's trying to make a premium brand. I'm not going to, dump on somebody for trying to make a premium brand. I respect you like love to podcast without wearing shoes. You have blisters, you have hairy toes and you really desperately need a pedicure. You couldn't see that from there way. You exposed me. My feet over, been, over here look fine. I have been staring at your dogs and did think it was a bold move to, to <laughs> podcast shoeless.
It's it is. And Ben came on the toast today and like two days ago. Always no shoes. It's very triggering. I'm and tr- you don't have like the most insanely gorgeous feet. Like you just don't. I'm trying to ground. I'm constantly grounding. You can't ground inside. Can't why not? Why can't I ground in the carpet? It's Do not you, a thing. No? Have you um uh, have you had a lot of men in your life, Claudia, with beautiful feet? Because I don't see a lot of beautiful feet. Men well, it's feet. worth mentioning. I haven't had a lot of men in my life, period. Just this I don't one. mean, I, sorry, I didn't mean to intimate like that. I mean, it's okay. But it's funny, right? Because I, I live in a beach community and I have a buddy, Max, Max Shapiro, shout out, who's like this incredible, brilliant foodie chef person. And we'll talk about in my town, there's like a couple really high end, lovely restaurants. And I'll ask him, do you ever go down there? Because it's a little bit of a schlep from where he lives. He goes, you know, I've been there, but I have an issue spending so much money on food and having to look at men's feet. And his his reasoning was like (laughs) beach community men, even at a restaurant that's 150 a person, they're going to mm-hmm. wear, even sometimes with slacks, they're going to wear open-toed shoes, and that's gross. And I don't disagree. I Josh, don't what's disagree. your Josh, what's your go-to open-toed shoe? Uh, my go-to, I'll wear either, um, I, I used to wear, I'm trying to think. I don't do it. <laughs> that's the answer. <laughs> you asked that question it. like you had an answer. Yeah, like before uh, Claudia made me throw them all away, I used to love like a Naote or a Birkenstock. I was a big fan of those, but Claudia is very anti the Naote or Birkenstock. I, now just, I, I want to say one now, thing. Now I, I want to say one thing, okay? <laughs> I have never, and by the way, that's not to say that if you came in wearing a pair of Naote, I wouldn't burn them. That's not to say that. <laughs> From the time that I have met you, I have never in my life seen a pair of Naote in your possession. It's possible so that you I- you just rem- told a bold-faced lie to your listeners wow. who you claim wow. to love and respect and appreciate the morons. It's possible that I ditched them at 16, but I did used to love a Naote or Birkenstock. That wasn't the now, question. Sure. That wasn't the question. Now- And then you said you slandered my name saying that I was the one who got rid of them. You would have. You would have gotten rid of them. I would have. You have no proof of that because I did not. Okay, but you would have. Now, I love a nice thong- by the way, why do they call it a thong? You have a nice thong. Okay, I'm going to keep calling you out on your bold face lie. If I go on vacation, you don't buy me a thong? Okay, well, that's not what you said, Ben. You don't even own a pair of thongs. We just went to Mexico, and Ben brought literally a pair of sneakers and a pair of loafers. And we're going to the pool. I'm like, where are your pool shoes? Like, your sneakers. Oh, I didn't bring any. I had to buy him flip-flops in the hotel gift shop. Like, you don't own sneakers. I mean, you don't own open-toed shoes. Josh, what do you think about water shoes? I think they're good if you're diabetic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're good if you're diabetic. Or they're- a toddler. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement count- accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. What would you say is the chief thing that you guys, uh, let's just call it debate about? Okay, are you saying like actually like real fighting or like yeah. silly banter? Real fighting. What do we? We really, we really no, don't. No, no. no, we do, we do. Let's not lie to do people. Do we real fight? We have fights, like we're a couple. No, we, we fight no, about we, stuff. No, but like, sure. what do we like really fight about? I'm thinking. Is there like one recurring theme? Oh, it's good that you yes. have to think about yes, it. Yes, there is. No, no, I don't have to think about it, Josh. What is it? I, I don't, don't even have to know. fucking think about it. <laughs> Shoes in the house. No, that's not what he's saying. That's what? not what he's saying. That's no. not a real fight. This is a real fight. Claudia decided to put a runner, right? 
And for those that are too poor, a runner is a small <laughs> carpet that you uh, take that goes from room to room. It's called a runner. We have a runner that goes from our kitchen area. You go outside the kitchen. There's a ben, hallway ben, into ben, the bedroom. I'm, I'm going to be real with you right now. Like I'm going to be fucking real with you right now. First of all, this is so uninteresting. Like just to hear you talk about it, I'm falling asleep. <laughs> it's pretty like, this good. Is supposed to be Marshall's an cackling entertaining in the back. Podcast, first of all. <laughs> Second of all, you're going to tell the story. And by the time you're done, I'm done with my response. You will be so mortified at the amount that I have eviscerated your ass. So go, 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 take go, the L go. And shut the fuck up. No, no, go. She put, go a, ben, she put, go she put a runner. She put a runner. And so everybody. Keep, way, you bringing up the runner? Like, no one's going to know what you're talking about. They don't know the layout of our apartment. I explained we know, it to them. We know what a runner is. Even the poor know what a runner is. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And Ben acting like he lives in a castle because there's a runner. Like a runner is literally a rug, Ben. Everybody has them. Calm you're, down. You're telling me that there are runners in trailer parks? Yes, actually. There's a trailer park They're runner? just rugs. They're only just shaped rectangularly. It's like literally not a big deal. Okay. A small, rich rug. It's you, not rich. It's from Ruggable. It's you, machine washable. You go into our apartment. You go into our apartment. There's hardwood floors. There's then strategically a runner. That they bridges. can't visualize it. Nobody I'm even, having them visualize it. Why don't you, you just won't say let the me. matter? Why don't you just say the facts of the matter? We now live in a new apartment that I've decided is going to be a shoe-free household because it's disgusting. Right ben on. has a hard time not acting like an animal and going through the house I'm with so dirty, I'm so I'm, nasty I'm ass so sneakers. No, I'm, he's incapable <laughs> of doing that. So he's going to tell some fucked story about a runner when in reality, he doesn't care enough about the house that we've made together to take his shoes off false 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 josh no shoe households fantastic right i love a no shoe household i have no issues where do you keep your shoes josh in a no shoe household okay well, the reality is is technically you could keep them outside your door but you can't do that in an apartment building oh okay by the way you can't do that in an apartment building but who does Ben offer that is what i do i'm so happy to have my shoes outside of the front door and they never come in the apartment no problem but this idea that I need to take off, that I need to put on my shoes outside of the apartment when I keep them in my bedroom, Josh just looks doesn't so make bored. any sense. Josh looks so bored. You want to know why? Because Josh is a father and Josh knows real responsibility. And Josh knows <laughs> that taking your shoes off is not disgusting, especially when you have kids in the house crawling around picking things up. Okay, what's so a real Josh, fight? You say it's no, boring, no, no, what's no, a real no, fight? By the way, this is a real fight. You're right, actually. Thank you for reminding me, dick. I remember. <laughs> This is like a very small, dumb fight. No, like the shoes. But we it always ends up becoming like an actual argument because to me, like, and it's all not really so much the shoes, but just like the whole cleanliness thing of the home, laundry, things like that, dishes. Ben is just like, and he's gotten better, but he's really a slob. Like he's disgusting. I am not a slob. And he's much better, much better than when we met, but he's no perfect human. He's not me, you know? Like me, sure. I, I, could, I, could, I could live without a housekeeper. I'm so fucking clean. But because I live with Ben, we have a weekly housekeeper. That's on him, not me. And- when I'm like constantly keeping the house clean throughout the week, like, and every time I just get back to the apartment, there's like another piece of shit for me to do. I get mad because he's not doing it. So I know he's leaving it for me. And I do feel like I find it like disrespectful. It's like a slap in the face. Like, like, oh yeah, I'm going to take a dump in the middle of this house. And I just know my wife is going to pick it up because I'm, you know, a king and she's the sorry people. It feels disrespectful. Clean is another level. Clean is another level. When we have company over, Josh, we have to put away our chargers. They can't know that we have a charger. We put chargers in drawers. <laughs> They're not allowed to know that we charge computers, that we charge phones. They're not allowed to know that we have a phone. We no, take all and, phones and, and, and computers and we throw so them funny, off the balcony. What's so funny is when we have people over, they remark on how beautiful our home is and Ben soaks up the accolades as if they have anything to do with f***ing him. He's like, uh -huh. oh yeah, thank you so much. We love the apartment. Oh, they're so, like, it's so clean. Oh yeah, we like you just soak it up and take responsibility for all. And you, you act like they're complimenting you. They're not, bitch. They're not. And on that note, I will say that I didn't know until I met my wonderful in-laws and family that having any sort of appliance visible in the kitchen is unacceptable, that there should be appliance drawers where the KitchenAid, where the Vitamix, where the toaster, where the milk frother goes, and the plugs, ideally, if you're redoing your kitchen, should be hidden in a uh, and in a below cabinet hiding space where little where little plugs go who are in witness in plug protection <laughs> that, <you> can... <laughs> that i feel like is a nice that's a real luxury that's something rich like we live in new york we don't have the biggest kitchen on the planet 
that I'm not unreasonable. We've got our toaster oven. We've got our coffee machine. We've got our appliances on the counter. Sure. Not the but, I, it, but in a perfect world, when one day you're living in South Florida with five kids, it's going to be palatial. You're not, you will not see a plug. Yes. Yeah, so Jackie does, you know, lovingly call me the sweeper because like, I just go on these sweeping missions where I just can't deal with any clutter. I don't care if it's a computer that you bought yesterday. It's going in the trash. Like yeah, I we just sp- throw- we've spoken about it before. I'll <laughs> randomly get home. Half my clothes are in the trash. No, well, that's good. That's different. Your clothes are ugly and everything you own has a hole. So like, sorry for, <laughs> sorry that I threw away the 10 year old t-shirt that was a dollar that has three holes in it. I'm so crazy. Arrest my, me. My wife did. No, listen, my wife does similar. I find that my wife and I fight just because, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but this goes to show that I'm 13 years in a relationship and browbeaten by my spouse. We have different love languages and thus that oh, can God. sometimes lead what to What is show. yours? Physical. And what is hers? Uh, like time to, uh, who gives a shit? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, quality time. She's a lucky lady. <laughs> my qual- my love language is, is a shock to nobody. Acts of service. Mm. And Ben, what would you say your love language is? I feel like it's either words of affirmation or quality time. Uh, I'm reminded of this horrendous study. I think it's, it's Claudia. Not a study. It's Claudia, not a study. It's not a study. It's Claudia a and I, Claudia and I made us t- take like this like horrendous quiz, and for a period of time, all that you hear the way that she's talking about it, she's talking about it like a therapist. She's like, "So, what is your love language? Acts of kindness, words but of that, affirmation." That's what it is. I'm not saying it like a therapist. I know, but that's you, what but, it is. But you know very well for a reason. Um, mine is definitely words of affirmation. When Claudia tells me that I have done something right, I am like a dog. Uh, ready to receive his, that was my treat. But maybe you're you're feeling like a dog because like me telling you that you did something right is so infrequent because you're always doing things wrong. Maybe that's it. It's mm. possible. Does yeah. that mean that you should look in the mirror? Why, so I can see my beautiful face? Yeah, you should do that too. We should all do that. I, I actually the- don't feel like words of affirmation <laughs> is your- No, I don't think it is It's either. quality time. Quality time for sure. Yeah. And physical touch. Get give, away from give me. Give me those hoots. <laughs> Um, okay, next, uh, next speak pipe. And I got a couple good surprises up the old sleeve. Let's hear from oh, Alexa. No. Hi, Josh and Ben. Major moron here. And my best I friend who actually lives in Los Angeles, long distance, is also a huge, huge moron. So we're morons together and we just love you guys and so smokers. much. I'm calling because I live in New York and my moron best friend lives in L.A., so we deal with similar long distance to you both. And I'm just curious how you two stay so in sync and in touch. You know, are there ever times where you feel like things would be easier if you lived in the same city? Um, asking for a friend how you guys maintain the long distance. Love you both so much. Bye. I, I just Your think... Thank you, Alexa. I, I think Alexa has to admit to herself that she's in love with her best friend. I yeah. want to say like one of my favorite things is you guys deciding to name your listeners the morons because when people come up to Ben, they're like, oh my God, Ben, I'm a moron. And I'm, it takes me a second because I'm not used to it. It is the funniest thing ever. And the fact that people have really- We're embraced, all morons. Embraced it is so funny. And I have to say, by the way, you know who we can thank for the word moron? Who? Oh. Because we've we like started saying moron like a year ago, maybe two. And we use it so much. And you know who influenced us? Because he says it all the time. Brian, Brian Kelly he says did, moron he, all. He says moronic. He does say moron. He a invented lot. moron. He, he does. Um, but yeah, our listeners are morons because we're morons. We're all morons. We just pretend that we're smart, but we're all really, really stupid. Um, OK, uh, what what do me and Josh do? Josh, right. That was the question. Yeah. Uh, what would we do to maintain our long distance relationship? Yeah, you guys mm-hmm. like run a business together. And, and, would it, and, would it, and would it be better if we were in the same city? Obviously, it would be better if we were in the same city. There's absolutely no question. Absolutely wish we were. No question. That said, I think we're very fortunate because we have the podcast. We essentially have uh, a couple hours a week where we are forced to catch up. Like I, we talk more than my best friends uh, in the city, like in the same city, because like life, life comes at you. You have kids, you have work, you have this, you have that. So honestly, the podcast is what holds our uh, deep friendship together. 
I also want to say this might be an extremely hot take, but I actually feel like this might be good advice. Like if you're having such like not every friendship is going to like last forever. And if you're having such a hard time, like keeping in touch, it's not like feeling natural to you for you and this friend to like always be keeping each other in the loop, calling, texting, like the friendship might just be like fizzling out and that's fine. Mm. I should be that hard to like maintain a friendship. I don't, I actually like my best friend, my buddy Len, where we live in. Wow. Well, different. Wow. You're going to say that right in front of Ben? Uh, Ben, his name is Len. His name is Len. By the way, do you have any friends besides that, that aren't Ian? Len and Ben. Len, <laughs> Len my, buddy, ben. my buddy Ren. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> ben don't just talked about. about don't, don't forget about Sven. Sven, uh, Ben just talked about some hypothetical best friend that wasn't me right before that. So fine. I, I, it's good to know. I hope you guys have a podcast it, it, together. Too. His, his name is Posh. <laughs> <laughs> You should have said like Nosh. Yeah, totally. Posh, I was cool. like, wait, I don't get the joke. Yeah, well, whatever. So we recently got in a speak pipe, which I don't think I should play, but I want to give you the gist. A no, lovely, please play it. Well, I think it might ruin. I I, I think it might ruin it. So maybe okay. I. Will you tell me? Well, should this you you go about it the the way that you think is best? Okay. We recently got a lovely speak pipe from someone who asked if we would be open to doing their announcement that they are pregnant on the good guys. Wow. Now, oh my God, wait, is it your wife? No. Oh, I thought you were gonna be like so cute and like, for that, like oh, damn. I get Paige on the phone. Um, <laughs> no, you guys gotta have at least one and before we have a third. Um, so fair. Oh, I'm so ready for it, guys. Can't wait to be Uncle Josh. Um, okay. Josh, if you carry, we'll have a baby. I would, too. I I would love to. I'd love I would to I would love to also. Yeah, it's a big pronouncement for people without uterus. It's like, I would. And I'm not just trying to say this to get in on, on a, you know, on, on the good side of every woman listening. Watching my wife um, carry both of our kids is one of the most spectacular things I have ever seen in my life. A, a woman who is pregnant is it's just beyond up until then. I'd only seen seen women on the bus and or women in sitcoms being pregnant. Mm -hmm. And when you see the physical toll it takes, I remember once and I've, I've told this before around like month five, my wife was like, I can't really breathe. And she oh proceeded God. to not be able to breathe because the baby was resting on her diaphragm right. till the baby came out four and a half months Ooh. of just being like short of breath. So Yikes. So this woman asked us, the good guys, and our number one good gal, Claudia, to make the announcement on the pod. So instead of playing the speak pipe, I thought it'd be a props to call her and have her announce it on the pod. Should we do it? Oh, wow. man, do you have her phone yes. number? She left her, she left her phone number? She left her email. I emailed her on the way. She has responded with her phone number. It's a 347. Oh, that's so exciting. So that's New York. So let's hear from our friend Katie, who now has my phone number. So, fuck. okay, here we go. <laughs> Do star six seven, star six seven, Josh. I know it's, it's too, too late. late. I'm all in. Will she here be we... able to hear us? Oh no, I don't know. I guess not. It's just Shit. you and her. It's just okay. Hold on. Is this really Josh Peck? Are you fucking with me? <laughs> she just said, "Is this really Josh Peck? Are you?" with me josh, oh no josh we, we can, we, we can hear her she can't hear us okay gotcha gotcha i'm an idiot i'm an idiot hi katie sorry you can't hear but ben and claudia ashri that's right ben ashri and claudia ashri are currently <laughs> listening to you on the podcast hey katie hi katie they say hello oh my god oh my god you have no idea you are making my day a thousand times better and it just keeps getting better okay well Katie, first of all, I'm going to need you to delete this number from your phone as soon as this, <laughs> this is over. And if I see my number leaked, I'm going to find you, Katie. I have your number now. I'm coming for you. I'm going to be your worst fucking nightmare, Katie. I'm getting wow, like snickering right now. I can't believe Um, By the way, why do you have your number blocked? Like, why is your name just Josh Pet? Like, what the heck? What are you nuts? Oh, she's calling you out. She's calling you out. What are wow. you nuts? Wow. <laughs> Enough, Josh, Josh is so upset. Oh, He's so upset. This is so crazy. 
This Katie, is so much better than her announcement. Josh's invasion of privacy. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> Katie, I don't want to uh I, I don't want to take away from your moment um with your very prescient and uh real take on I don't know why my number's listed. Um but please for the good guys listeners now, please we want to hear your wonderful news. You wanna help me out with this? No. I'm pregnant. My first kiss. Woohoo! Wow, Mazel, Mazel, <laughs> Katie is pregs. <laughs> Woo! Go, Katie. I can't. I can't. Yeah, well, yeah, ask Josh. Ask Katie who she's telling. Who is this? Was she just telling for? us? Katie, is this what? Who are the morons in your life that this is for? This is for all the morons. This is. This is. The, I don't even know. This is just for. I don't even know. This is just for me because I was like, I, yeah, this is selfish. I was, this is for me, really. I thought her husband. Is it? Like, does sure. anyone? Does anyone else in your life not know yet? Like, will they be this? This episode is going to air like within the next two weeks. So, are they? So is the there anyone is, who doesn't know? No one I know actually listens to the podcast. What the? So fuck? I know. Hey, I know up. Mars. I've tried. No one listens to me, Josh. It's a, it's a, it's a theory. It's a sad thing. Josh, hang happens. up. <laughs> <laughs> well, Katie, we wish That's you a lot of luck. What? I'm sorry. I cannot. I'm like really not handling this well because I cannot handle this right now. I can't. Tell, tell Katie. Katie that we wish her well and that if she doesn't name her son moron, I she's dead to us. Yeah, like, right now. I can't. I, like. Hold uh, Katie, we, Katie, we want to say. From the good guys themselves, we love you. Congratulations, Mazaltov, as they say in our community, <laughs> and we wish you all wonderful things. And we'll, we would like a check in every trimester. Please check back in with us, Katie. Send us a speak pipe. Let us know how it's going. But for now, we must say adieu. We bid you adieu. Thank you, and adieu. <laughs> Just made my day for the shitty. I've been such a bad day, and thank you so much for this. Aww. Aww. Thank you, Katie. We love you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's do maybe one more speak pipe, and then what are you nuts? Perfect. Oh, I need a what are you nuts? <laughs> okay, oh, I, and I have one. This one is from our dear Grace. Hey, good guys. Long time more on here. I was just looking for advice on when to know um, that you're ready to have a second baby. I currently have... Maybe let's do something a little more. You know. <laughs> 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 I was like, Josh, I'm going to defer to you on this one. <laughs> uh, this one's from Chloe. I love the pod. Um, my name's Chloe. Um, I just want to get your guys... I was just yelling in the back at a teacher, but I recently graduated college and I've been trying to meet people and I've been kind of getting into my fitness journey and I see all these cute guys at the gym, but I have no idea how to approach them or if they want to be approached or what to say. I feel like it's just awkward eye contact or asking how many sides they have left and it's just the whole thing. And I thought you guys might have some insight. Thanks. Hmm. Um, we'll get to her in a minute, but I do want to say, cause you know, we do advice on the podcast too, but we don't have people, we have people submit via email and you guys do the voicemail thing, which is really cool. Um, but does it just enrage you how slow people talk sometimes? Like, cause I talk so fast. I'm like, just spit it out. What do you want? Yeah. She was pretty quick. She wasn't bad, but I was just thinking like, it's enraging. No, yeah, most, most of the time it's today, junior. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of the, for sure. For sure. Um, so I think it's incredibly toxic to meet somebody at the gym. Why? I don't know. I just feel like it's just like whoever you're going to, I don't know. That's like, like a really bad call. I thought you, what I was going to say is like, uh, you have no experience meeting someone at the gym because uh, we're married and you never go to the gym. Now you do. That is crushing Claudia. No, like, <laughs> no it's like, you're not like a, and by the way, you go to like a private gym. Cause you're like a diva. Like you've never been to like a golds, like literally you, you, I'm a diva. You literally work out with a trainer in our home gym. That's why I was going to say, I'm ill-equipped to answer this, Katie. I apologize. Wishing yeah. you well. We are both ill-equipped to answer that. Said I think meeting a man at the gym who's hopped up on testosterone, protein, big pecs, toxic environment. Okay, why is, why is that the guy? Why isn't it just like someone, you know, going after work for a quick jog? Because he's not. He's not yeah. there. 
take take the gym there, part out of it. Yeah, take okay. the gym part out of it and just say like in a public setting that maybe she would see someone regularly, what would be the best way to make inroads? You guys can you know what? say that. I actually like the idea of meeting someone at the gym because like you never look uglier or worse than you do at the gym. So if you can get a guy to like go out with you or ask you out at the gym, he's going to be shook when you show up with like a blowout and a spray tan. You're going to look gorgeous. He's he's really it's like kind of getting the worst part over with. Very interesting. I agree. But the question is, how, how would you approach the person? Well, what's different? You're, I guess you're just like half naked and a little sweaty. Like, whatever. So is he. I don't know what I would say at a gym. You need like, um, like, oh. You need a line. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Like, what do you bench? You know, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you could bench two of me. Something like that. You know, if you're small, like, I guess nobody could really bench me. But... You need a towel? <laughs> Not a like little that. sweaty? No, that's rude. No? No. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that. Can I interest you in a bottle of water? You look thirsty. Now, let me ask you guys this question, because, and again, mm. these, these matters of the heart really don't apply to Ben nor I. We, you know, met when we were very young, and I really have no dating experience. But, like, and I'm old school, but, like, and maybe if I was single, I would feel differently, but, like, I would never, like, really ask someone out. I would wait for somebody to ask me out just because, like, I'm traditional in that sense. And then it's like, oh, they like me, so, like, it's good. You know, I, I have the, the reassurance that, like, they wanted to go out with me, so, like, I'm, I don't have to be worried that they don't like me, you know? Yeah, it's very but vulnerable. I would, what but are you saying? Still like, I would adopting, never do that. Got it. But assuming we're doing like traditional courting gender role stuff, like you would yeah. still make it clear you were interested. Like, I think it's incumbent on you to at least give some sort of signal that you're enjoying this person's company. Like, that, assuming it's not just like a cold call, right? Like, you've chatted yeah. a few times at the gym, you have a good rapport. Like, I would at least, I'd wait for some sort of signal of like, that that person enjoyed chatting with me and would, you know, be open to a coffee or something, right? Like you would, you would do that naturally, right? I don't know. It's also really hard at the gym. I feel like, you know, you, you go to the gym alone, so you wouldn't be there. How do you know if someone at the gym is in a relationship? You're really not supposed to weight lift with jewelry on, so no rings. Like what if you're, you know, <laughs> working up all the courage to talk to this guy and he's got like eight kids and he's married. The move in LA was always that if that person is an active person, you go, oh, have you ever done this hike? That's like, five, like not like some scary hike where you could be murdered, but like the yeah, super right. pub, like the super public easy hike that's like five or ten minutes away. You now either the person goes, I've never done it, and you go, oh well, if you ever want to go, like I go like a couple times a week, like it's great, super easy. Or if they do go all the time, you're like, oh, we should go together, like it'd be a fun, and that would be like your first unofficial date. Just saying, Running and Canyon. see, that's why I could absolutely never live in L.A. because if I was trying to get somebody to be impressed with me, like doing physical activity is no way to do that. You have to like get all sweaty. My makeup would be like running down my shirt. My shirt would turn orange. Like that's just the LA lifestyle is not for me. Wow. Okay. Fair enough. Ben, what are you nuts? Hit us with, with your, what are you nuts? My, what are you nuts moment is the people in your life that, uh, insist on asking you questions that are easily Googleable that you don't know. They don't know. But they ask you and put the onus on you. I'll give you a prime example. My so are you talking about yourself? No, I, my sister. Okay. Did, my sister did this to me and you today. My sister texted Claudia oh, and yeah. I pictures of two credit cards, and she said, "I just got an LLC. What business credit card should I get? How the hell should I know? Look up the two credit cards. That's what I would do. You're putting the onus on me. Googling the Amex Gold card." Googling the Chase Preferred, the two that you put in, I'm going to read the exact same list of bullets that you're going to read to come to the exact same decision. Another example, I'll have a friend that'll say, oh, how long will it take to get there? Google it. I, put it in Google Maps. Why do I know anything that you don't know? Okay, what are you nuts? I'm going to disagree with you so hard. When you're talking about your sister, first of all, She's asking us because we know Brian and we, she like, we're very well versed in points Just culture. Just because we're done. adjacent I'm not to done. Brian doesn't mean I know anything about points. And well, maybe you're not listening when Brian speaks and you should be. Second of all, it's not really something you can just Google. Like, it's really like an inside baseball type of thing. Points is very confusing. Just Googling it is not enough. And I'm sure she was asking us, so we would just ask Brian because like having a note, like a ear to Brian I don't agree. And so, first of all, you do that with actually dumb shit. Like what? Like we'll be watching something and be like, oh, what's that guy from? I don't know. Look it up, bitch. How can I possibly look up what he's from? Wow. It's called IMDB. How can I look it up? On your phone? I can't look. I don't know his name. Right. Okay. So you Google but you the knew. OC no. and then you say, oh, the OC, Ryan, you find his name. You tap his IMDB. No, like this is I what knew everyone what, does. But I knew that you knew what he was from. 
Yeah, but if you just shut up, we could keep watching the show, you know? Josh, what's yours? Before I whip out my pistol. <laughs> <laughs> so Florida of you. Um, my, <laughs> my what are you nuts is just um, getting drunk over 35. I just <laughs> think, and I don't mean to be ageist here, fucking get over it. Get it together. Either get better at drinking or drink less. Because it's just, if you're black or browning or graying out at this point, it, it's become ridiculous. What are you searching for? What are you running from? And who are you running to? I just, get, get your priorities in order. It's enough. You've done it enough. So, so you don't mean getting drunk. You mean getting sloppy, blackout, uh, like embarrassing yourself. Because I that, kinda, I completely, that, that I completely agree with. But yeah, but I kind of mean, I, I don't know what drunk, I, I just feel like if you're, if it's impeding, you know what, Ben? I agree with you. Yes. I'll stop talking. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. You're yeah. right. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And my what do you know, it's just to bring things full circle, are people who you have sex with who send you calendar invites because the two just shouldn't be the same. <laughs> You guys, this is unbelievable. <laughs> we do, we do. <laughs> we in a recreational, way, not reproductive by way. The way we shut do. up! Well, I don't know what you're about to say, we but just do. shut your mouth. Things just shut your mouth. Spicy. Just shut your mouth. <laughs> pretty spicy. Oh well, we or gotta go, guys. Out. On that note, thank you. I will cut that out. Um, <laughs> uh, I can't. I'm so glad that people won't know that we just cut out 20 seconds and it was my favorite. We live, we live on, we live on one Cholula lane because things are spicy at our house. <laughs> oh, oh, please. Oh, please. He, that I'm leaving in, Claudia. Asleep. Claudia, he that I'm leaving asleep. in. Yeah, leave this in too, bitch. He falls asleep at literally eight o'clock and then he comes on the podcast and is like, oh yeah, we live on Cholula lane. It's spicy. <laughs> like, please, you're We're asleep. <laughs> We're catty quarter to Tabasco Drive. <laughs> you can find us Asleep. on Sriracha Court. Literally. Asleep. Oh, all I have to say is you can't get this kind of podcast anywhere else. You can't so, get it anywhere else. So true. Beautiful Claudia, thank you so much for joining us. As thank always, you, Claudia. in case you don't, because honestly, our podcast is so big. If you don't listen to the toast, you should listen to the toast. If you somehow don't know who Claudia is, I, I highly doubt it, right? You probably do. But you they can, do. No, but, it's possible. It's possible. But it's possible. Uh, you you can follow her wherever wherever she is, mm -hmm. everywhere that she is. TikTok. Follow her on TikTok. Thank you. She needs more TikTok followers. Listen to the man. Follow Claudia on TikTok. She makes great TikToks. Josh is the only one here who knows how to go viral and keep followers. It's unbelievable. Josh is TikTok. It's through the roof. Share the, share, just share your knowledge of how you grow your TikTok. But this episode, five out of five stars. Rate, review, subscribe. Incredibly important. Spotify. Apple, watch us on Josh's YouTube because it's a lot funnier when you get to see I our agree. faces. I agree. It's really important. Share a clip with a friend. You know, maybe the friend doesn't want to listen to a whole episode. You send them a clip, all of a sudden they're listening. Can they're I listening. A question? Like, of course. Are you not worried about like coming off as desperate? Like, <laughs> this is what we do every episode. Oh, oh. Does it sound desperate? <laughs> Just a little. Okay, cool. No, but listen, I love it. Like, you, if you're not going to believe in yourself, who is?